Welcome, everybody. Um, as Darren said, my name is Tuomo Tolanen. I look after a pro audio group at Shure UK. So I figured we'd have a quick look of where radios have come from. That's 1953. I imagine in 1953, that was pretty cool. You know, somebody could talk into a thing that looked like a stick or a baton and sound came from somewhere else. Where do we see radio? Small events. I go to my son's primary school. They got four little channels of radio. They're hissing and popping all over the place, but has to be radio. Completely on the other end, uh, you know, hundreds of channels. So that was 162 handheld microphones. Had to work. No tolerance for failure. But again, clearly the approach to making something like this work is completely different. You know, look at the Olympics air monitors the other summer. If a radio mic fails on those shows, it's a huge issue. You can't go back in time and fix it. Things have to work. It's, it's worthwhile paying attention to how these devices work. Certainly if you're a student and you're looking for a new job, I also think it's something that makes you more employable. If you can go, you know, say you're looking to get into the theater world or a major tour, if you can actually say, I understand RF, that's definitely something that I think a potential employer is going to want to see. Absolutely a skill set I think that's required in uh, the industry, which is somewhat lacking.